I'm your friend. Since when are we friends? I've thought of us as friends since the fall of Zanzibar. With my personality, I don't have too many friends. That's what I trust about you. It's what makes you human. Please, Snake. Save my niece, Meryl. All right. But I have two conditions. Name them. One, no more secrets between us. I want complete disclosure at all times. And two, I'll only accept orders directly from you, Colonel. No cutoffs involved, okay? Agreed. That's why I was called. But one thing. What? I'm not a Colonel anymore. Just a retired old warhorse. I understand, Colonel. We have no past, no future. We live in the moment. That's our only purpose. You guys are real heroes. There are no heroes in war. All the heroes I know are either dead or in prison. One or the other. But Snake, you're a hero, aren't you? I'm just a man who's good at what he does. Killing. There's no winning or losing for a mercenary. The only winners in war are the people. That's right, and you fight for the people. I've never fought for anyone but myself. I'm 
got no purpose in life, no ultimate goal. So why are you here then? Why do you continue to follow your orders while your superiors betray you? I only felt truly alive when I was staring death in the face. I don't know. Maybe it's written into my genes. You're pretty good. Just what I'd expect from the man with the same code as the boss. Do you remember me now? Can't be. You were killed in Zanzibar. Colonel, that ninja is Grey Fox. No doubt about it. You were injected with fox dye as a part of this operation. Naomi, tell me something. About fox dye? Do I still have time? I don't blame you for wanting me dead, but I can't go yet. I still have a job to do. What am I fighting for? What are you fighting for? If we make it through this, I'll tell you. I don't have any family. No. Wait. There was a man who said he was my father. Where is he? Dead. By my own hand. Big Boss. What? Big Boss? I had no idea. There was no way you could. It happened in Zanzibar six years ago. Only Snake and I know the real truth of what happened there. So, is it true? Was Big Boss really your father? That's what he said. That's all I know. Snake, you can have regrets if you want to. It's only natural. But you can't keep attacking yourself for things that happened in the past. That road leads to madness. Believe me. Welcome everybody, nice to see you all here today, let's get some music on hey, let's get my classic favourite on, who have we got in here guys, Strengths in the night. What a thrill. We all good, guys? Who have we got in here today for our live interview, our live chat with the man himself, David Hater? I always said this song was a little bit like a James Bond song. He'll be joining us any minute now, guys. How are you? So who is in here today? The Patriots. Just Vincent, Private, Marcus, Mothra, Fabri, 
Nito, Rogue, T Mac, T Mac, brother. It's been a while since I've seen you in here, brother. Fido. Shane Nee? Is that how you is that how you say that? Shane Nee. What's up, Benry? Golf Wang. Garrett Alex. Jeff. How you doing, man? Going well, Crank. How are you? I'm looking forward to this one. I hope you guys are too. I spent a whole 100 days in MGS3. No worries, Chris. Glad to be bringing you some awesome guests, guys. Um, if you're new around here, this is a series where I interview and chat with some of the best voice actors and actors in the video game realm. Today, we've obviously got David Hayter. Uh, just recently, we had Doug Cockle, who is Geralt from Witcher 3. We had Troy Baker on. We've had plenty of guests. Plenty of guests. You can check out the playlist on my channel and you can also click subscribe and a like guys it really helps me out on the video and it's free in a dream snake eater <laughs> you gotta love it you have to love it guys <laughs> Heavily based on James Bond, yeah. Awesome that you got the interview, Javier. Thank you. I'm glad you're here. Should be a good one. It's like Shane. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. I thought... Raiding on. I'm sure we could we could try, man. We could always try. Three. Looks like three is winning in the chat. My personal favorite is one. Yeah, number one. Three, yeah. Looks like three is the winner. Why do you guys like three the most? What about, is it just the epic scale of it all? Is it just the, the refined gameplay at that point? What is it that you like? Funnily enough, not many people here said five. I think one or two said five. Very interesting. I know a lot of people took a bit of issue with some of the, you know, the story and some of the things that happened in five. 
even though you know the gameplay is is pretty damn good in five. One second, guys. I'm just going to quickly get David in. Give me a second. Old man now. And I'm your friend. Since when are we friends? I've thought of us as friends since the fall of Zanzibar. With my personality, I don't have too many friends. That's what I trust about you. It's what makes you human. Please, Snake. Save my niece, Meryl. All right. But I have two conditions. Name them. One, no more secrets between us. I want complete disclosure at all times. And two, I'll only accept orders directly from you, Colonel. No cutoffs involved, okay? Agreed. That's why I was called. But one thing. What? I'm not a Colonel anymore. Just a retired old warhorse. I understand. David! I can't hear you. That could be me. Give me one second here. You there, mate? I'm here. Bang! Can hear I can hear you. You can hear me all good? I can, of course. Beautiful. David, Dave, can I call you Dave or David? You call me King of the Zucchini People for all <laughs> I mind. Um, yeah, no, Dave is fine. How are you, Dave? Great to have I'm you good. on, mate. I'm good. Thank you for having me. I, uh, uh, I'm a huge fan of Australia. I've been a number of times, and I love it every single time, and I love all the people there equally. But, but after this interview, I might skip the list a little bit? Well, we'll, we'll see how it goes, mate. <laughs> see, uh, you might climb up a little further in my estimation. I, you know. Well, oh, that's not bad, actually. Yeah, I've been working on it for quite some time. Oh, shit, that's really good. You've obviously <laughs> been a few times down here. I have, indeed. I, yeah, I shot a pilot there in, uh, oh, I can't remember when, 2003. I was in the, lived in, in the Gold Coast for a while. and. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, yeah I was just, uh, what, summer before last, I went to Comic-Cons in Perth and Sydney and went to Uluru and... Yeah, I love Australia. Oh, that's awesome. Glad to hear it. And you've probably been in, to a lot of cons too. I've been to a... Well, in Australia, just two. Um, okay. But for my other job as a filmmaker, I've been... I've scouted Melbourne. Your your government gave me a helicopter to fly around Sydney and Melbourne in. Which uh, So thank you for that. Uh, your tax dollars at work. <laughs> oh, and, really? Uh, yeah, yeah it's fantastic. What was that for? That was for Wolves when we were thinking about shooting in uh, in Australia. Oh, right. Well, don't yeah. worry. I'm going to get all into movies with you. We're going to talk yes. a lot, lot of movies because I've got to pick your brain. But you, you also you lived in Japan, didn't you? I did. I went to high school there. Uh, lived in Kobe and Osaka, uh, off and on for about four years. And what was that and, like? That yeah, was amazing. Well, it was amazing. It was life changing. I, uh, I, you know, learned to speak you know, decent Japanese. And, and I lived in Kobe in the 80s where there were very few foreigners. So it was sort of like being, uh, sort of like being Tom Cruise, you know, you or, or uh, 
they all used to call me Duran Duran. I'd walk down the street and they, they'd be like, no, no, notorious. <laughs> like this. And uh, so it was, it was really fun. Uh... The Jap- Japanese people are amazing. The life there was incredible. Um, and we just, you know, we went to clubs, dance clubs, and we were drinking at 17 and fantastic. Wow. That's pretty, that's pretty young to be there, though, you know what I mean? When did you, so when did you move back to the States in your 20s? I moved back, um, well, I moved back to Canada when I was 19, and then I did Canada, a year. Canada, sorry, yeah. No, that's all right. I, I've lived in both. Um, I did a year of theater school in Toronto, and then I said, um, to hell with you people, I'm moving to Hollywood, and that's what I did. And that's where you're based out of now, L.A.? Yeah, been in L.A. for forever. Well, you've got to be, don't you, if you're in the entertainment industry, L.A. or New York, really, isn't it? Well, you know, certainly when I was coming up, that was that was a necessity. I mean, things are a little different now. Um, you know, you can do meetings and pitches and stuff from wherever. Um, yeah. But it is helpful to be, you know, L.A. is just all about filmmaking and, and the entertainment industry. So it does make it easier to to network and to find work and, you know, build alliances, make enemies. <laughs> yeah. So how was your how was your twenty twenty you know with COVID and everything? How did that affect your day to day life, mate? Well, well, I mean, well, my hair got a lot longer. Uh, I like I, it. Yeah, yeah, it's my it's the John Snow look, um, but better looking. Well, far better looking. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, you know, being a screenwriter and a voiceover actor, I can do those things from anywhere you know like mostly from home um so it was a lot more uh, uh, working from home than i had been used to but it didn't didn't really change my life that much i mean i really miss i miss bars and i miss my friends and i miss uh you know just basic human interaction but but work-wise it's been pretty um pretty good actually yeah well, like just a mixture of everything from acting to producing to writing, or were you honing in on one certain thing? No, I do it all. I, I, um, I'm negotiating a, a film deal right now for a, a movie that I wrote uh, over the pandemic. Um, and a big, uh, I can't say yet, but a big company's um, made an offer to buy it. Oh. And uh, I just did an appearance in an animated movie as a voice actor, which is very very cool i can't talk about that either so, I uh, I'm, I'm used to having guests on here say yeah i've got some really cool stuff can't tell you anything about it yeah <laughs> it's just the yeah, industry isn't yeah. it yeah I, I i can talk about um i'm producing uh season two of warrior nun uh which is a show yeah I, I man awesome to create on on netflix um so actually in in uh three weeks i'm gonna move to madrid for six months so if really? anybody's from yeah if anybody's from madrid I'll, I'll be sneaking around you know if you see a cardboard box that's me probably um, <laughs> yeah i'll be in spain uh, for till till the end of october probably really for the for the whole shoot yeah so what well, overseeing it what's your what is your role like for that show i i am it's the greatest job in the world i think i'm i'm <laughs> I, i'm essentially second in command and as far as the creative goes wow um and uh i basically the plan is that i will sit on set and if the actors or the directors have any question about why they're saying a particular line or don't understand the story don't understand what we're trying to set up i have it all in my head because i've been working on it for a year and i say well you know we're trying to accomplish this and this and this you know, so we need these moments, and I can't really envision a better job. You know, because there, yeah, because usually on TV shows, there's different directors for each episode. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, well, this one, it's actually uh, one director for two episodes. So, um, so they will be. So they, sh- it's called block shooting. So they'll do two episodes at once, uh, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, and get those done, and then, and then you. Have, so we'll have four. Uh, well, I, I shouldn't really say how many episodes. No, but you've done directing before as well, haven't you? With Wolves. I have. Is that I something have. you'll go back to? Or is it too difficult? If, they, if, if they'll let me. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I loved it. We didn't get a very good rollout, so nobody saw the movie. So it's not like 
people are banging down my door, but I, um, I actually wrote another movie for me to direct, which we we're trying to set up to shoot in uh, Adelaide. Uh, either Adelaide or Sydney at the end of the year, so I may move from Spain to Australia. Oh, nice! Then yeah. there's a then we'll have a beer, hey? We'll have a beer <laughs> and uh, some some uh, what is it? The Morton Morton Bay Bugs, you know? <laughs> sort of thing. You know your stuff, hey? A kangaroo uh, steak or two. You know? Oh, you haven't had? Have you had kangaroo before? I have. I uh, just two years ago. Oh, really? Ago. And what do you yeah. think? I was fine. It was good. It was a, a, a lean steak. I mean, I I don't think I'd chase it down because they're, no. they're so cute. But um, but uh, but it was a it was it was a decent decent meal. Man, we got we got a lot to talk about. So I'll, I'll try and get through as much as we can. Um, Javier says you look a bit like Venom Snake with that long hair. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, Snake and I, Snake and I have a. Uh, a lot in common, obviously. And Venom's snake is the only snake who's not me, so that's weird. Yeah, I was gonna say. Um, so how did how did that how did that role actually change your life? Because I mean, did you ever think, you know, twenty years later, you'd still be this this character would still be so impactful, you know, you're still doing so many cameos on it, you're yeah, it's still in your life. It's still a huge part of your life. It's, did you think when you did those lines, did those recordings back then that, that you'd be here 20 years later or so? Well, um, I, I don't know that I... I certainly... I couldn't have envisioned 20 years from then. I, I, what was I? I was 20, 28, I think, when I did the first one. And so I couldn't really picture my future at all. And really, when I got yeah. Snake, I, I was I was broke. I, you know, I had produced and starred in a little film, but it didn't make any money. And, and um, so I was broke and depressed. And then I got this this amazing role. And I knew going in to record it, uh, they had all the designs, the Yoji Shinkawa designs up on the wall. And I got to see cut scenes from uh, I got to, they showed me the moment when Snake takes down liquid in the hind D. Ooh. And it was so cinematic and so impressive that I, I knew it was going to be uh, big and I knew people were going to like it. Um, or at least I knew that it was going to be a big swing for Konami and, and Kojima and everybody. Um, so I, I did expect it to be a big, a big groundbreaking video game. Just but, because of um, the gameplay and the game itself? Yeah, it was yeah. just completely revolutionary. And, and it was the oh, first yeah. game the first game ever where the actual player character went straight into the cutscenes without without changing the style you oh, know it used really? to be you'd, yeah it used to be you'd play and you'd have like this sort of like blank polygonal face and then it would go into a cutscene and it'd be this beautifully rendered cg scene but um but snake that's why snake didn't have a face really in the first game it was uh, so that you could go straight into the movie of it and so that had never happened in a game before, and I, I knew that that was going to be a big uh, impact. Uh, now, uh, if you told me that I would be spending time at this age doing 2,500 cameo voices as Snake, <laughs> I probably would have said, what the hell's a cameo? <laughs> Who are you, and how did you get into my room? You know, like that sort of thing. <laughs> Um, so it really does dom it, it dominates my life in a in a I mean daily it's it's you know I, if I go on my Twitter it's it's all about snake it's everything is about snake oh really um, yeah yeah which is which is cool because I mean he's an amazing character and it's and it's incredible to have inspired so many people uh, so many people's enthusiasm and love for this character in this world um, but it is weird because I I mean I've done you know, 60, 70 projects since then. And some of them were giant number one movies around the world. And still it's all, <laughs> it's all snake. Yeah. Yeah. Some, you know, blockbuster movies, Watchmen, X-Men, but yeah. when's the last time you did, what was the last line you recorded for snake? How long ago was that? Last line I recorded. That's a good question. Oh God. I don't know. Um, well, <laughs> So Metal Gear 4 was in 2009. Metal Gear uh, Peace Walker was 
uh, in um, 2010, I believe. So that was the last official game I did. Um, since then, I recorded a commercial yeah. for Sony as Old Snake, mm -hmm. and I recorded a commercial for Ford as Snake um, a few years after that. Ford? Probably. Wow. Yeah, you can you can Google it. It's uh, Snake and the Colonel talking about the Ford Focus as you know, <laughs> which which I was doing this commercial for these guys as a um, as myself uh, for Ford, and they said, "Hey, would you do one as Solid Snake?" And I'm like, "Well, you have to get Konami's permission." I was like, "They'll never go for that." And then they did, and then I was stuck, and so I had to I had to do it. <laughs> um, cool. So I I think that was the last. I think that Ford commercial was the last time I officially got paid to be Snake. But what people don't know is you do. Oh so no, that, I, I'm sorry. That's not even true. No, I did cam I did cameos in Bomberman as uh, Oh yeah, as Naked Snake and Solid Snake, um, and that was probably 2018, 2017. So actually, it was a lot more recent. When was Smash Bros? Well, Smash Brothers, we 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 recorded that during uh, Metal Gear Four. They came oh, in okay. while we were in the studio there, so that was two thousand nine. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, what people don't know is the amount of cameos you do. You must be one of the hardest working people on that site in terms of how many you get. Surely you're up there in the rankings. <laughs> I did. I asked them. I was like, "Am I? Do I do the most cameos of anybody?" And they said, "No." There's I think it's a couple who do, they have some home improvement show or something and they do just thousands of cameos. And I think really? Andy Dick, Andy Dick lives off of cameos. And uh, so, so some people do more than I do, but I don't know how it's, uh, it's a lot. Yeah. Well, I was going to say anyone in the chat now, feel free to head in the link in the description and get one from Dave. Yeah, You'll sure. be more than happy. Did you, Enjoy. did you see the, the Taco Bell one that blew up? Two million views that you did on YouTube. Oh, is was that the uh, crunchy taco situation, Colonel? What's the procedure? Is it, yeah, is it that one. Yeah, two million yeah, views. That, 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 that wasn't a cameo. That was a. Um, oh, okay. Somebody asked me to do that on video at a oh, comic. Oh, okay. And they were like, "Well, you oh, tacos Dorados, you know what's the procedure?" And um, and then so that started going around. And then the guy was like, can you get Paul Eiding, the colonel, to come in and tell you how to make a taco? And so we did. And we built we built that in as well. So, yeah, that was sort of viral by design. But do, do you expect two million views? You do. Um, no, that's a that's, lot of views. That's, <laughs> that's pretty extreme. But I've had tweets that 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 get a million views. Um, oh, yeah. You know, they're it's a pretty huge fan base so mm. i'm not um i've actually not surprised three million views i think the most i ever did was three and a half million what what on uh, do you remember i think it might have been when i tweeted the picture of me and Kiefer sutherland uh drinking together in dallas and oh, I, yeah. under the heading the twin snakes and then oh, also yeah. the time then also the time i yelled at those people for putting my voice in to promote tech and um it, I don't know. It was some big gaming gaming tournament or something, and they'd gotten a cameo of me, and they used my voice without permission, and so I yelled at them on Twitter, and <laughs> and that and that one just blew up for some reason, which is uh, kind of a drag because I was being cranky, but you know, yeah, kind of yeah. <laughs> oh, um, Abril here says thank you so so much for your work, Mister Hater. The impact those games had on my life has been huge. Lots of love from Mexico. Oh, well, gracias, Adrian. Yeah. I appreciate that immensely. Uh, Northen says his character in uh, Dragon Age was really cool. Do you remember that doing <laughs> that work? Yeah, I totally. So let me tell you the story about that. So that was uh, what his name was, Lieutenant Ren, I think, and and he yeah. was a dwarf. Yeah. And um, so they called me in, and they said they wanted to practice this new performance capture technology so they brought me in they put the dots all over my face and they put a camera to catch my face directly so it was the first performance capture done for dragon age or for, for that company um and i said uh i said well he's a dwarf why don't, why don't i do it with a scottish accent you know and uh 
they said, no, don't do that. Just, uh, <laughs> just do a regular voice because it's just a test. It's not going to be in the game. So I kind of oh. did this. I kind of did the snake voice just because it was comfortable for me and I knew they were never going to use it. And then the game came out and they're like, hey, that dwarf is snake. And I was like, well, you know, so <laughs> nobody nobody told me that was going to happen. And I, I wish uh, I had known because I would have put on a different a different voice. But I'm glad people enjoyed it. anyway. Oh, so you got a lot of comments saying you're just playing snake here. Yeah. 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 And it was right. like I, I, I wouldn't have done that if I had known anybody was going to see it you know but it was a misunderstanding i wasn't you know yeah right trevor says you need to do another signing oh yeah well again you know so we did a we did a big metal gear reunion signing in january and that was so overwhelming it took me it took me like three weeks to get everything signed i mean it was just stacks and stacks and stacks of, of things so um, so I will do it again, uh, but I'm going to be pretty busy, you know, with Warrior Nun pretty soon. So um, I, I don't. I think it won't be for a little while. I, I, my apologies. I am yeah. keeping but it, waiting. You uh, will do it again, hundred percent. Garfield, I will definitely Cat, do it again. Garfield Cat says, "Hey Dave, I enjoyed your uh, MGS games and your movie Guyver too. Just wanted to take this moment to say that you are awesome." <laughs> well, thank there's a lot you. of love in this chat for you, brother. I what about me, that. guys? I'm no, here too. No. No. <laughs> well, uh, I'm sorry. Who was the who was the 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 caller? Um, that was Garfield Cat. Oh, well, Garfield Cat, you're awesome, and Dan, you're awesome. You're pretty good. That's even better if you yeah. know that reference. So. With talking Keith Sutherland, I know you mentioned this before, but so you you obviously weren't you're a bit surprised that he came in for that game, right? But you you met I had him. A big, I had a big exclamation point over my head. <laughs> but you you did meet him. He is a lovely guy, isn't he? Lovely guy, yeah. Yeah, he's you know we're both Canadian, and and um, I went up and I talked to. We were at both at a comic con in Dallas, and so we were at the hotel afterwards. And he was at the bar with. Uh, with um oh i can't remember his name which is terrible so i shouldn't even describe who it is um I, I, i'm sorry jason patrick the star of uh uh lost boys it was jason oh, patrick yeah, yeah, yeah jason patrick Kiefer sutherland and leah thompson from uh, back to the future and they were all at the bar and so i went up and i introduced myself to Kiefer and i told him you know, I was the guy whose job you took for a snake or whatever. And <laughs> he, he, he barely knew what I was talking about. Like, he, really? Like that was just, yeah, no, that was just some voiceover job he did. And he didn't really know. But he was super nice. And he's like, ah, sit down, have a beer. And so we hung out. And while we were doing that, my assistant for the con was sitting across the bar watching us. And she texted me, all caps, fight him. And <laughs> I was like, nah, I'm not going to do that. Um, and then the next day, I told her, I, I think that fighting him would have been easier than drinking with him. <laughs> Did he drink you under the I, table? I was feeling rough. I was feeling rough. <laughs> was, that a, was, that a, was that a random occurrence? Was that a convention or something? Or? Yeah, it was a convention. Convention, Comic-Con. yeah. So yeah, he was so there he for MGS as well? No, no, no. He was there for being Keeper Sutherland. Yeah. Because he yeah. said, <laughs> "Yeah, right." He's a superstar. <laughs> yeah, right, right. That makes sense. So, did you end up playing MGS Five in the end? No, no. You didn't. Too painful. Oh, really? Too painful. Yeah, I, I, I can't play a game where somebody else is playing Snake. I mean, you know, it sounds sounds pouty, but I, I'm like, you know, just wouldn't be wouldn't be pleasant. What do you think the reason is, in your opinion? Do you have any clue to this day, or? The reason they brought in Keeper instead yeah. of yeah, well, I think because Kojima wanted to work with a, a movie star, and that's what I think. Yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, because you know you see Death Stranding. Actually, and... uh, actually, I, I I heard a rumor that my old friend Avi Arad had recommended Keeper because I think they were hoping to then have him play Snake in the movies. So uh... I, I, heard, I, I don't know if that's true or not, but. Um, yeah, yeah, but yeah. That's, uh, that's what I heard. Because he, he seems to really love working with Hollywood actors, you know, Norman Reedus and Mads Mikkelsen. 
in the latest well, game? He, you know, in, he, in his dreams, he's uh, he wants to be a, a huge film director, and that's what his yeah, that's where his love lies. So, uh, so yeah, I understand that. Yeah, have you you've met him a couple of times, but I think people don't don't realize that you're not you're not close friends with him or anything because there is a there's a barrier there, isn't there? In a way, like well, you know, I never. Yeah, I mean, people always say, you know, what, what's it like working with Hideo Kojima? I'm like, I have no idea. He, he mm. we, I met him a few times. He came to visit the recording sessions, but he didn't have anything to do with the English language recording mm. past at all. Uh, um, so he, he, he oversees the game in Japan, and, and that's it. So, um, so yeah, I, I mean, I, I, like... Look, I wasn't I wasn't thrilled about their decision for Metal Gear Five, but I also don't have any, you know, I'm like you don't have any ill will, yeah. Yeah, no, I I wish him well. I hope you know his game. You know, he's a brilliant, brilliant game maker, and I hope he does uh, continues to do amazing things. And I had an amazing run on Metal Gear, so he's got a crazy mind, doesn't he? Crazy mind. Well, I'm I'm replaying Metal Gear Four right now, and I oh nice, how crazy it is. Yeah, and how insane you know some of the choices are. Oh, yeah. But it's really, but it's really fun. I mean, it's you know the gameplay of those games is always astounding, and the technology of them is always mind blowing. So, uh, so yeah, I, I yeah I just don't really know him at all. Yeah, it's 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 bizarre to some people to hear that, but it makes sense because I'm the guys that I've talked to that were in Death Stranding. They said the same thing. They never met him. They came in to do the lines, and then yeah. that was it. They never met him. So. Yep. Interesting. Um, Matt Matthew says, David, your voice changed as Snake grew older, but if a remake of the first one is in the making and you'll return, do you think you'll be able to still do the young Snake voice? Yeah, I think so. Listen, I can jump back to young Snake anytime I want. Um, the reason it changed is because I played Big Boss, who was older and yeah. you know, Peace Walker. And then I played old snake who was falling apart. And um, so there's many different, you know, snake iterations. I mean, they're, they're, they're all very close because they're all me, but I feel like the young solid snake is, is somewhere around here. And I think I could pull that off pretty well. So what do you, what do you, do you think they're going to be doing a reboot? What do you think of that? You know, I, thought it was just a rumor until the day before yesterday and then i got a the tweet a, no no was there a tweet i got it no i got a text from one of the insiders saying they heard it might really be happening oh okay um, what what was the tweet there was a there was a cryptic tweet metal gear have created this like fake account um and they retweet it was about like I have to get it up. Someone in the chat will get it up. But it was they—they they were acknowledging something from MGS2 from memory on their Twitter account, mm -hmm. Metal Gear. I'll bring it up now. But um, Metal Gear. Yeah, I mean, it. I, th I think I know for a fact that a lot of people want to see it. So it's just, I—I I believe though in reboots they wouldn't get you to go back and do the lines. They'd just use your old stuff, wouldn't they? Well, they can't from oh. they can't use the original playstation because the sound card on the original playstation mini isn't anywhere near as good as today's consoles so what happens is you run those old tapes and you can hear traffic going by outside and you just <laughs> pick up all all this room noise because we didn't do it in a studio we did it in some living room um so of course we did re-record the entire game for the twin snakes uh so they could theoretically use that uh those recordings uh, but again, I don't think that the quality would match what needs to be done. But I, I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, so the tweet was Tom Olson said, came down to the computer lab to say hi, but there's no one here. They must, There must be a scrum meeting or something, maybe next time. It's a picture within the game, the lab. Mm -hmm. And then Metal Gear responded saying, Tom, we talked about this. Please check your codec each morning for meeting updates and evacuations. We have visitors coming next week. So that was a little tease. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Well, I yeah, like I say, I, I I only had some confirmation that it might not be a rumor a couple of days ago, and even that wasn't. That was like still a rumor, but now but now it's an industry rumor, so that tends to be a little more accurate. Than a little more accurate. Rumors. Would you 
how would you approach it? Would you do a shot for shot remake or would you go third person with the first game? Would you change it up? How would you take it? Oh no, I hate uh well third you mean what do you mean third person? Like you changing like would you camera keep... following? Yeah or... that's what I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um because that would change the boss that would change the the game, I think, too much. It would definitely change the game. I mean, part of it was the fixed camera didn't allow you to see things around corners and didn't allow you to always get the angles you wanted on on what you were fighting. And that really played into the gameplay of it. Um, but at the same time, you know, I love third person games and it might be kind of cool to um, to live more in that environment. I mean, it might be kind of cool to update the uh, the gameplay to to modern expectations. I don't know. I mean, I'd be happy either way. I, 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 uh, I got frustrated with the fixed camera, but at the same time, like I say, that's integrated into how it's you play the game. It's the game, though. Like it is the. I don't think you can change that. That's just my opinion. Even though, like, uh, maybe it's just, a little bit outdated now, twenty years later. Well, I, but... you know, look. I think. I think knowing knowing the industry the way I do, I feel like they're going to want glitteringly beautiful mm. renderings of all of the sets and Shadow Moses Island and all that stuff, and so. Um, so I would expect it will be third person 3d, uh, immersive, uh, gameplay, but, um, but it'd be kind of cool if they just super rendered it and still kept the fixed camera. Yeah. That, that, I would like that. Did you, you've played all the games, yeah? All the ones I'm in. Yeah. And what's, do you have a favorite three? I think I heard you say was your favorite. Yeah. I always say three. I, I also, I don't want to undercut one because that. I one's my favorite yeah yeah i mean i play i could play through one or three anytime um but three felt just from the cinematic scope Epic. of it the full and the full story and the world of it as well um just that retro russian jungle or where where wherever well yeah it was a russian jungle um that whole world was just so immersive and really cool and the story story was amazing mm. Uh, the other cast was amazing, so um, so yeah, I think that that one is really the most successful all the way around. But I love three, I love two, I love four, I love Peace Walker, I love the Peace all. Walker's underrated. More people should yeah. play that. Yeah, and the artwork in it is astounding. Yeah, you know, the, the 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 drawn cutscenes are really cool. When fans come up to you or talk to you, what do they say their favorite is? Because a lot of people in this chat said MGS three was their favorite. Three and one with the standard. It's always, it's always, yeah. Three is usually the most. One is next, and then two. Like I, I, nobody, people rarely say four, even though I think that's a pretty amazing game. But um, and two is very weird, and uh, it's not my favorite, but but it is still a great game. But a lot of people are like, that's my favorite, you know. And I think they really love the weirdness of it, you know, that it's so bizarre and so uniquely Metal Gear that uh, that people really really dug it why do you think four doesn't get as much mention i don't know um i don't know really is it because the cutscenes are like 100 hours long there's a lot of cutscenes, but i yeah you I've... yeah I, I i i'm playing it now and i'm trying to watch everything because i want to remember all the scenes that we shot or that we recorded and um yeah it's a lot it's like you really have to be a hardcore fan to sit through all mm. of it um and yeah, maybe the cut scenes overwhelm the gameplay of it. Uh, but, you know, that return to Shadow Moses Island, the fight between Metal Gear Rex and Ray. There's uh, some amazing moments, yeah. And some, there's some incredible things in that game. So, And the, and the Octo Camo, I just can't get enough of that. Yeah. Do you look at these games like with your director-producer lens sometimes? And like, oh, I would have done this differently? Too. Yeah. Yeah, mostly, well... From a director producer standpoint, from a director standpoint, it's hard to fault the games because they're so beautiful. They're so beautifully shot. The cinematics are astounding. Um, but the writing sometimes, as a screenwriter, I'll be like, oh, you know, I wouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think I would have done it quite that way. But, you know, again, that's part of what makes Metal Gear Metal Gear. It's Kojima's, you're in Kojima's world, and that's very unique. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't write it like that. Um, so mm. there are definitely things I would do differently but i don't know that i could say that there's anything i would be able to do better you know i, I you know when i'm when i'm when i play snake 
I, I'm not a director or a screenwriter or anything. I just come in to do my job and live You're that an actor. character. Yeah, and I do it the way they want me to do it. I, I don't. I'm not allowed to rewrite anything or no. make any changes. So. Did you have Did you have an impact on the character? Like, were you able to change anything or improvise as you were doing it, or did you stick to the script? Had to stick to the script. If you changed a word, they had to call Tokyo and clear it with everybody. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So it, it really became, you know, if there was something where I was like, you know, this line would be so much better if it was this, then we'd go through that process. But for the most part, um, I just did it as, as written. I mean, I get to shape the character through how I choose to do the voice and oh, how yeah. I choose to react to people, but that's that's pretty much it. Pa- Parzival says, hello, Mr. Hayter. Um Shout out to the Liquid fans. Big thank you for the snake roll. You are my childhood hero. You made my day 200 times better today. Uh-huh. Well, thank you, Parzival. I appreciate the support. Now, watch out for Metal Gear. I love how you That's just... Good advice. I love how you just switch it on. Does that voice ever, like... Does it take its toll on, on you? Or is it no. it's easy now? No, I, I can do it anytime. I uh, yeah, I just developed some techniques to figure out how to make it happen whenever. And plus, the older I get, the easier it is to. The more I sound like Snake. You know? <laughs> when, I, when I first started, I, I you know I just sounded like this, and I had this very young voice. And and yeah, now now I'm a little closer to what it is. Uh, Shane says um, I have to pick my daughter from school, but David, I love you. Metal Gear will always belong to you. Love your movies and shows. Much love. Thanks, man. Da- Snake, David, thank you for bringing Big Boss and Solid Snake to life. Thank you for being so kind to the fans. I hope I can meet you in person one day. Much love. I hope so too. I um, it'll be nice when I can go back to doing comic cons and meeting people. And but if you ever see me on the street, you know, feel free to shout my name three times. Snake, 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 <laughs> and I'll respond. Would you? You would look. You'd have to, that would get your attention for sure. I, I always do. I, you know, yeah. like if I go to Comic-Con in San Diego, that happens all the time. And I'm always like, yeah, that's right. You know, <laughs> that's what, so no, I always, I love, my level of fame is just ideal. Oh, you know, it's I so don't get, good. Yeah. I, I don't get hassled. Yeah. I don't get hassled. But, but now and again, people out of nowhere just go, oh my God, I love you to death. And it's, it's always positive. It's always great. Is it always is it always Snake though? Is it ever for the screenwriting, or anything else? Um, yes, it was. I got recognized for Giver uh, not too long ago. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh. So that was that was cool. Uh. Some people. I mean, you have to be a hardcore cinephile to know me from, know my name from screenwriting and then recognize my face. So mm. sometimes industry. Industry people in Hollywood will sometimes go, aren't you David Hayter, the, the filmmaker? And I'm like, yes, I am. And um, because even if they're asking about X-Men, they really want to hear about Snake. I mean, that's that's just how it is. Yeah, I was going to say the, the, the dealings you've had in Hollywood and in that in that realm, do you get a lot of people talking about gaming to you? And how, how do they how do they see gaming? Uh, some do. I mean, the gaming world and the Hollywood world are still very insular from each other. They're, they're not, you know, they're not really inter- intertwined. But a lot of uh, young executives now have grown up playing games. And so um, so sometimes they'll know that I'm Snake or they'll or I'll have a meeting, a 10 minute meeting, and then they'll make a snake joke out of nowhere. And I'll be like, OK, they've been uh, on yeah, that for a while. Um, but for the most part, it's very different. Like people in Hollywood know me as a screenwriter and a producer. And, you know, I have this certain level of, you know, respect or recognition. And a lot of them don't have any idea that, that I'm snake or, or, and many of them don't even know what snake is. Yeah. Yeah. Cause uh, do you still think there's like this stigma around gaming and acting and gaming? Like it's, uh, it's not as good or, because you know you no, talk about no, Keitha and he he didn't he didn't seem like he was as passionate as you know yourself or you know a Troy Baker or something you know what I mean? Yeah, well, yeah, well, I can't speak to that. I I, I don't know how impassioned he was. I didn't play the game, but uh, I don't think that people look down on 
on uh I don't think that like on camera people look down on voiceover anymore. No. I mean if you know anything about games, the 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 cinematic quality is many times better than Hollywood. Mm. The acting quality, you know, Troy Baker, Nolan North, Jennifer Hale, Great Lyle. I mean, these people are so good. They're awesome at, at their jobs that I mean, you can look down on them if you want, but you're making a grave mistake cuz these are some of the most talented people in the world and they do it better than anybody else. So, so, uh, no, I don't think there's a stigma. I mean, if there is, I wouldn't care anyway. I, I don't care about other people's stigmas. <laughs> yeah. Da- uh, Cal says David is becoming old snake. <laughs> with the hair. I am. <laughs> I am definitely becoming old snake. You can see, you can see the white in it now. There's a cosplay and, uh, coming on soon. I reckon. Yeah. Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe, We'll see. Uh, Snake here says, are there any lines that just straight up confused you when recording? Yeah. Yes, 40% <laughs> of them confused me. <laughs> you know, that, that's, uh... that's, that's, that's the other thing too, because sometimes I, sometimes I, like I'm playing Metal Gear 4 and I'll be like, God, you know, I wish I had delivered that better. Or And then I'm like, I didn't have any way to understand what I was saying. Like when we are reading those lines, we, we don't get the script in advance. So when you hear me read it, that's the first time I'm seeing it. So really? it's very, yeah, it's very difficult to make that feel natural. Jeez, and, you did and, a good job then. <laughs> well, thank, thank you. Well, I, I, we all did, you know, we're Far all sort of go, we're all living these weird conversations for the first time. And so, you know, so I, very often I would have to stop and say, who is this sunny how old is she? Why is she making eggs? Why is that important? You know, what is her relationship to snake? Am I, you know, whatever I have to, it's, it's like, and there's no visuals yet. So you, you have to kind of do it in the dark and kind of feel your way through and figure it out. So, and then there's just reams and reams of technical information and history of metal gear and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, a lot of times it doesn't make any sense. And so I have to ask, and then it, my question gets translated into Japanese and they ask, somebody in Tokyo and then they come back to me and say oh well it's this and this and this and sometimes the explanation doesn't make any sense so that's so uh, you didn't the voice director that you had didn't wasn't able to answer those questions sometimes she was okay Um, I mean Chris Zimmerman who directed them all Mm -hmm. and is brilliant you know was easily able to answer uh, character questions and you know relationships and stuff like that but as far as like weird yeah. technical things or or where it gets really off the like i'm like why are we in the um rectum of arsenal gear what does that mean and nobody could explain that to me they're like well it's these levels and they're called after these sound like whatever let's just go and um yeah so uh you know i don't think there's anybody including kojima who could go through and explain to you every single line you know oh no Maybe Kojima could. I don't know. So, did you? Was it all voice? Did you ever do any mocap for Metal Gear? No, the mocap's all done in uh, in Japan. So, um, oh, of course, yeah. So when we did uh, Metal Gear Four, all I could see were videos of the Japanese mocap actors. I could see the Japanese yeah. version of Snake uh, climbing onto the helicopter, and I, you know, I could I could react with his movements and stuff like that. Um, no, sadly, I never got to do any mocap for Snake. I, I wish I had. Because I, I feel like I have seen pictures of Norman Reedus in the mocap, so that might have been different on that game. Well, I'm sure he did because he's, you know, yeah. he's the movie star. He's he's the guy they wanted. I'm sure he did performance capture and yeah, yeah. motion capture. You know, I don't. If it was my face, um, if it was like supposed to be me as an actor in mm. the role, I would insist on doing the mocap because whenever anybody else walks for you uh it's not you know it's it, it changes the character so it's sort of like the character in uh um republic so i played this character was that mocap yeah i had my face and scanned my face in my performance capture but somebody else did the mocap and just oh, the way he, the way he no. moved and the way he walked i'm like i i wouldn't walk like that but (laughs) so you've you've have you ever done motion capture before just just the face stuff just performance capture really yeah that's crazy but you'd obviously Uh, it is because i 
Uh, yeah, I'd love to do it. I mean, I know yeah. how to fight. I know how to move. I, uh, I would love to do it. My friend Elias Tufexis does it all the time, and it just seems like a blast. But at the same time, you know, voicing, voice acting is not my primary job. Mm. You know, my, my primary job is as a screenwriter, as a producer, and occasionally as a director. And so that takes up most of my time. The, the voice acting, I, I do when I get offers, and I do, but I don't. You don't actively pursue? I don't really pursue it too mm. much. I just, I'm lucky enough to be well known, and people say, hey, what about David for this? And if you ask me, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Um, but if I have to put a bunch of work into, like, I'm not going to go audition for mocap uh, yeah. parts. It's, I don't have time. Yeah, yeah, 100%. But you would love to do it maybe at some point. I'd love to, off- for somebody yeah. to just hand it to me, yeah. <laughs> uh, Kuma says, MGS4 was my first game in the series. Love it. That's an interesting oh, cool. way to get into it. Number four. It is. Work, well, it's kind of cool to to dig back into the history after that I, I think that's cool so now we've got to t- we've got to talk a bit of movies um talk to me so you worked on scorpion king i did talk to I me did. about that it was so cool so they were three weeks out from shooting that movie it was the rock's first starring role in a film he was I in the was, wrestling yeah yeah he was time. 29 years old i think at the time and um so it was three weeks before they were going to start shooting, and the president of the studio uh, sent me, the president of Universal sent me the script and said, what do you think about the script? And I was like, uh, I think it could use some work. And so I, I wrote up two pages of notes on how, what I would change, how I would handle it, so on and so forth. And, they, and so she contacted my agents. They hired me on a weekly basis, paid me just an ugly, ugly sum of money uh, to come in and do... Uh, rewrites for the three weeks pr- prior to them shooting, and then a couple of weeks while they were shooting. So, wow. at, at one point, they called me and they said, "We're shooting the climax of the movie, and we don't know what to do. Can you come out here and work it out with us?" So I was like, "Yeah." So they sent the van for me, and I went out to the Mojave Desert. They had this huge castle set built. Oh, and yeah. I and so it was me, the director, Chuck Russell and The Rock. And <laughs> we were figuring out and he's all in his Scorpion King gear. And we're figuring out what the final action sequence should be. And I was like, OK, well, where's his bow? And they said his bow is across the across the it's lying, you know, across the, the deck there. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. So he can spot it at the last moment and like he dives for it. But he'd been shot in the back um, by a, a bowman. And yeah. so I was like, so then on the day, I was like, I was like, oh, my God. He should get the bow, pick it up, and realize he's got no arrows. And the girl's about to be killed, and the villain's about to win. And he just reaches back over his back and, like, pulls the arrow out of his back and bang and, and kills him. And so I, so I made up that moment on the set. Wow, and, uh, that's like the best moment. <laughs> uh, it was so cool that's and, crazy and so the, yeah so the rock loved it and chuck loved it and and so so that's how uh so that's how it happened and it was really really cool and i done that a few i did that for um you know the first time you meet wolverine the first time you see wolverine's claws in x-men uh there's a moment where he's been cage fighting and the guy whispers in his ear i know what you are freak and he pulls a knife on him and hugh jackman i was like I was like, okay, so I got in the seat where Hugh Jackman was. I was like, okay, so this guy pulls a knife. So you turn around, boom, block the knife, put the claws to his neck and, sh- the, you know, pin him to the thing. Then I was like, a, a shotgun barrel should come in right by his ear. And it's the bartender saying, you know, get out of my bar, freak. And you think that's it. He's, you know, he's caught. It's fights over. But he just snarls and then boom. And he slices the shotgun in half with his other hand so you got him with one set of claws here and one set of claws back here and this big hero pose and i was like and that could be your introduction to wolverine and they were like wow that's, right. and, and that's so they awesome did so, yeah so i did so again i you know i like i say i had a bunch of fight training and uh so i just put it to use in those moments and when you do something like that and then you see it on film it's there's nothing better Tell really tell cool. me he's a great guy because I love that man. 
he is he is the nicest man oh yeah i, I may have ever met oh um, that's great to hear yeah you know and he it was his big break on on x-men obviously mm. and, and so so you know he was very humble i mean i think he's still very humble but at the time you know he was just like holy shit this is a a, a huge opportunity he and wasn't so as big we, back then yeah no well, nobody knew who he was he was doing theater um he had done a few small australian movies so some of the australians knew him yeah but it was but it made him a superstar and and Anytime I've seen him since, he's just so kind. And I, I, well, the last time I saw him was X Men Three. I went to visit the set, and he was like, "Dave, hey, come on, join us for dinner." And so I went and went to his trailer. Brought my cousin, and she was just starstruck. And we sat <laughs> and had dinner with Wolverine. And you That's know, awesome. he's just he just is the sweetest, most generous guy. Really is. What did you think of Logan? I thought that was a really oh great movie to send it off, wasn't it? It was amazing. It yeah. was amazing. It it had so many nods to our first two films. Didn't it? Yeah, and it was so I wrote I sent out a tweet to James Mangold who who directed it and um just, you know, Great expressing director. how blown away I was by it and, and how he got to do like an R rated Wolverine, which we never got to do. Mm. And so it was just yeah, across the board, just an incredible film, you know. And he's tackling, James is tackling uh, Indiana Jones, isn't he? I know. That's I a tough task. <laughs> I wouldn't want that job. Oh, I mean, I'm man. Weird, but I, I wouldn't want the pressure. The pressure on that man now to deliver far out. Yeah. yeah Especially crazy. after the fourth. You know what I mean? Oh, I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Guy Man here says, I'm just playing Old Republic right now. David is great in this one too. Aw, oh, thank you. So... So yeah, so Gaiman, I really appreciate that because I, um, so I do the lead Jedi character player voice in in Star Wars: The Old Republic. I've been doing it for twelve years, so I've been doing it just about as long as I did Snake. And when I signed on, the Star Wars people were like, "Listen, you know, Metal Gear fans are one thing, but Star Wars fans are insane. Like oh. your life is your life is about to change." And it didn't at all. People rarely talk about. Knights of the Old Republic at all. It never comes up. Uh, I'm still inundated with Snake. And um, I, I think people don't really know that it's me, but because uh, I really, I, I do it with more of my own voice, which is sort of Jedi-like, and, and I put a Jedi spin on it, and I try to keep any gravel out of it. Uh, is it because so, it's called Male Knight? Or you know what I mean? It's not a... Yeah, and I think that's because why? You, yeah, and I think because you can make him look like anything you want. So he doesn't have a set face. Exactly. You know, there's no there's no set design that people can. There's not a character to. there. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. just whoever your interpretation of him is. So, um, so yeah, I think that's I think that's why. Yeah. But I mean, still, it does bother me either way, but I, I, I just thought no. it was funny that they were like, "Oh, Star Wars, you're going to be overwhelmed," and I'm like, "I'm completely whelmed." <laughs> Give me more, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, MV says, "I cried when I heard your voice in Bloodstain." Ah uh, yes, so it falls to me. Um, Great game, yeah, Zeng Zengetsu. Yeah, that's a cool game. I was very, very grateful to to play that. Also, I don't know if you know, but I do the opening narration bit as uh, in the game. Yes, doing yeah. my doing my Ian McKellen. You know, <laughs> do sort of an older British narrator. You know, well, so I, I I don't think anybody knows that's me. I knew it was you from another interview. I didn't. I, oh, okay. Your acting was too good. I didn't know, but well, thank you. I I know because of an interview. Yeah. Uh, Crank right. Mambo, David, much love. Nobody, Crank Mambo. Nobody plays Snake better. Could I ask? Do you still play games much now? And if so, what games are you playing at the moment? I do play probably far more games than I should, given how busy I am. <laughs> uh, um, I'm playing Metal Gear. I'm currently playing Metal Gear Four. I'm re-obsessed with Battlefront, Star Wars Battlefront 2, uh, playing mm. the online, the space starfighter uh, levels. Um, so you can come out and try to kill me if, if, if you dare. Um, <laughs> that's the only thing I play online. And then I'm also playing uh, Oddworld Soulstorm because I, I've always loved Oddworld. And, uh, well, you were in the last game, weren't you? I was, yeah. yeah. I was in a... 
Well, I was in a reboot of, of, yeah. of the first one, yeah. I yeah, was. you and were the, so, the bad guys, yeah? No, no, I no. was one of the Mudokan... Oh, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the Mudokans to be... But I was a cranky sort of snake-like Mudokan. <laughs> so. And then they raised my voice, so it's like, hey, what are you looking at, stitch lips? You know, like that sort of... Oh, I'm going to have to go back now and hear that. How are you finding it, Soulstorm? It's beautiful. Beautiful yeah. game. I, I, Yeah, I, the world is is so cool the gameplay is very challenging you know it's hard to save them all and um but i'm really i don't know it's very zen you know you, you sort of fall into a zone where you're leaping and jumping and taking over the minds of slags and it's really fun it's a it's one of my childhood games because yeah would i would have played it when i was seven or eight or nine so i have to i've only played a little bit but i've got to keep going um SGN says, what would happen if Solid Snake got a hold of Guyver? <laughs> well, that's a, that's a good question. Um, well, Solid Snake, it depends on at what point in their lives. I mean, when I was the Guyver, I was 23, so I had a lot of power, but I wasn't overly wise or strategic. So I think, you know, Snake would be very difficult to beat because he's very smart. But the Guyver is the Guyver. You know, he's bulletproof and he's covered in blades and uh, his kung fu is very, very strong. So uh, I don't know. Tough call. Have you going back to games? Have you played games like Last of Us Part Two or God of War? Any of those big hitters? Have you tried them out? I tried. I mostly just play, you know, triple A list games because I want to know what the state of the art is, and I want to know. Plus, I get sent a lot of these games. I got sent Days Gone as a potential adaptation into a movie. So, ah. um, so I got that one for free, and I played it, and I loved it. Um, can't comment on the movie. I, I don't know what's happening with that. Uh, yeah. But um, I played God of War, a number of the God of War games. Uh, I love the Assassin's Creed games. I, I started to play Last of Us and the opening of it, and this is a somewhat of a spoiler, yeah, yeah. but when, when he loses his daughter, that was as a father of a daughter that was too rough too much me. yeah i couldn't take it so i i quit really isn't that yeah, amazing i just you know and i knew there was another young girl coming into it and it was just going to be torturous and sad and um you know i try to play games for fun and not, <laughs> not not emotional torture you know you're 100 uh, percent right I mean, to... that's not knocking. Look, those no, are amazing no, games. that's a amazing, compliment. Amazing, yeah. yeah, exactly. Amazing story, but the story was too real and too compelling uh, for me to put myself through that kind of heartache. So I, I didn't do it. Yeah, it's yeah, it's too close to home. Uh, yeah. Model says, David, I messaged you on Instagram a Metal Gear Three knife I made. I think I think Dave oh, gets cool. a few um, messages, guys. So bear with him responding. Well, I do. I do. Uh, my apologies. I don't, I barely look at Instagram. I, I, I have it for doing like live signings and stuff like that, but I really, if you want my attention, try to go to my Twitter account, mm. uh, and I will probably see your knife there. Uh, I apologize that I've missed it today. Yeah. Just ta tag Dave on, in, uh, Twitter, which is link yep. in the description. Um, what about the Metal Gear movie, mate? Have you? What was your thoughts on Oscar Oscar Isaac coming into that? Pro? He's a great actor. I've got to say, I loved him yeah, in Ex Machina. He, oh yeah, oh yeah, that was that was so good. Mm. Um, yeah, he was so great in that. Uh, yeah, I think it's amazing. He's you know he's a huge movie star, great actor. Um, you know, there were a few other big choices that were mentioned where I was like, oh god, please not, don't let it be that who, person. Who were they? Can you yeah, say I, or nope. not? No, no, okay. can't dog another, can't dog another actor. No, okay. But there's oh. some big actors out there where I'm just like, why are they? It just wouldn't fit. Thing, yeah. You know. Um, but uh, no, Oscar Isaac's going to be amazing. So, uh, and the other thing, as a Hollywood professional, that I love about it is he probably gets the movie made. You know, like they'll find a time if he really wants to do it, they'll find a time in his schedule and they'll finally commit to you know spending 200 million dollars or whatever on the movie uh which has been a long time coming i i love oscar isaac and i think he'll do great if i had a second choice i'd go hugh i reckon yeah, he would have done i also justice. like Hugh. Yeah. um I, I originally pitched it for hugh 
uh, mostly because, you know, because he's such a lovely guy, but he's also, you know, he's a six foot ten super handsome, or, or, I'm sorry, six foot two super handsome, you know, uh, movie star. So, and I think he looks like Snake. So, um, I think he would have been really good as well. But Oscar Isaac has got a, you know, got a darkness about him that I think will really work well for it. And I think it's a great choice. Great choice. If, 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 in a hypothetical world, they said, "Come and direct this, Dave. Come and screen do the screenwriting." You'd you'd do it in a heartbeat. Well, I'd probably have a stroke out of sheer surprise. <laughs> um, would I do it? I'd absolutely do it. But uh, <laughs> you know, there are political issues that stand in the way. Um, yeah. Of me working on the film, so uh, so I doubt that they're going to give me a two hundred million. My last. My last film, I think, made four hundred thousand dollars. So I, I doubt they're going to give me a two hundred million dollar film to, to direct just yet. Um, no, but you know, but I'm friends with the, the, the director who's attached, Jordan Roberts, and he's great and a huge fan. Mm-hmm. So, movie's definitely in, in good good shape. But yeah, I would absolutely do it if uh, if reality completely changed. Was there ever talks about an animated show with Snake? There are still talks about it. Oh, really? Um, yeah, I, 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 uh, yeah, we've been trying to, you know, Be the awesome. director again. Jordan is trying to uh, set that up, and there's a lot of interest in it, but it's difficult to coordinate the companies. I think is is the problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, to get, you know, you have to get Sony on board, you have to get Konami on board, you have to get uh, the whatever the network or streamer like a Netflix or something on board. So it's you know it's complex to put it together, but. To do it with the original cast and sort of really flesh out the world would be very, very cool. So you would have noticed, obviously, that Sony are really going down the path of movies, you know, with Uncharted, you got The Last of Us show, you've got other movies in the fold. Um, do you Are you surprised by that? Are you Is that something you'd want to be involved with? What are your thoughts on why they're, why they're going so heavy into that area? Well, because you can't make anything now unless it's got IP behind it. So unless it's an intellectual property, an established world genre, whatever, something that's that's been sold before, like that, that's the only way you get. Particularly big movies. Big movies now cost between one hundred and two million, two hundred million dollars. So they need proven concepts, and they're running out of them. It's it's why they. It's why they dove so hard into Marvel because suddenly they were like, "Oh my God, we've got all this material mm. that's already written and established, and so we can just mine that for forever." Um, but now they're running low on comic book movies. They've they've done everything. So obviously, if a movie or if a game makes a hundred million dollars or a billion dollars, then there that's their next plan. You know, you look at a Halo or you look at Uncharted or The Last of Us and anything that makes a huge impression or I'm sorry, anything that makes a lot of money <laughs> will be viewed by the studios as a viable option. Um, and I think it's great because I think that, that games have been home to some of the most groundbreaking storytelling in mm. entertainment for, for quite some time. Same, same, same with comics where comics were doing amazing things with writing that were so much edgier than anything you get in the movies. Um, so yeah so i think it's great so yeah i i very often any any film executives that know that i'm snake or know that i'm a gamer come to me and you know like i say they send me free video games all the time to consider adapting and that's pretty cool um and i love it if if the if the world is is great like like days gone i really like days gone i thought it was me too it's a shame there's no sequel coming yeah future. that's a bummer that's mm. a bummer but i'm sure it's based on sales or reception yeah. or whatever but the game itself i thought was a really well-told story it was original the gameplay of it was so cool uh the motorcycle the hordes all that yeah. stuff so um so yeah so i thought that could be a good ad- adaptation and it didn't it didn't come together for whatever reason you know, a lot of times you have these meetings and everybody's excited and then nothing people yeah. forget about it um but uh but yeah no i'm always on the lookout for uh for great adaptations to, oh, you would to knock that on. out of the park and speaking yeah. of comics watchman what a movie Zack snyder oh, yeah. what Thanks, do you remember man. from that experience i mean that's oh. that's a that's a 
that's a very good movie. I, I watch oh, that well, every well, year. Oh, <laughs> that's very kind of you. Um, what do I remember? Well, I worked on that movie for nine years. Um, wow. Yeah, four different studios, four different directors attached at various times. Shit. Uh, you know, we almost made it in London in 2006 with Paul Greengrass directing, uh, where we were, we, the sets were built and we were casting and we were almost ready to shoot. And then the studio killed it. The studio got a new really? uh, chairman. Yeah. Wow. Brad Gray came in. I can say this now because he's dead. Uh, Brad Gray came in and took over the studio and he didn't want a Sherry Lansing film, took over Paramount. And so he, uh, he killed it and like, like just well, just put a knife months. in it out of nowhere. Yeah, a couple months before we started shooting, so we'd already spent millions of dollars on it, and Seems a lot crazy. of the, yeah, a lot of the Paul Greengrass version was pre-vised. Um, well, it's 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 usually what happens when somebody comes in and takes over a studio. They don't want somebody else's hundred and fifty million dollar film. Oh, okay. If it if it works, it's like oh that was Sherry Lansing and she was a genius. If it doesn't work you get blamed for Sherry Lansing's choice to pick it up. So you lose either way. You know yeah. I mean? They look at it as lose-lose. I, I, I'd be like, just have it be a hit and own it, but whatever. Yeah. Um, so he killed it there, and then we... Uh, and then it ended up at Warner Brothers, and Warner said... I, I didn't think we were going to get it made, and then Warner said, well, we got a director who just did this movie 300 for us. You know, will you take a look at the, at the movie... And tell us what you think. And so me and the producers looked at the early, an early version of 300, and we were like, "Yeah, yeah this guy, <laughs> this guy can, this guy can hire do this it. guy Im- immediately because he knows, <laughs> he knows comic books. The movie was so beautiful, and the action was so incredible. So, um, so yeah, so it was Zach uh, who got it made. Really? You yeah. Know? Yeah. Suddenly he was he was the hot new director, and he wanted to do Watchmen, and my script landed on his desk, and that's how it happened. So did you see um, his his version of Justice League recently? I did. What did you think? It was very good. Yeah? <laughs> it was very good. I mean, you know, um, I enjoyed it more than the theatrical version. Uh, you know, I think four hours. Four is hours is little, long. You know what I mean? A little indulgent. I mean, that's not really a movie anymore. That's more of a an event that you're, you know. Mm. But it, I thought it was incredible how much he had shot and how much of that world was rendered. I, I loved, um, I thought Ray Fisher's storyline was great. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Um, I really loved, uh, you know, Wonder Woman's introduction. There was a lot of really, really amazing sequences, obviously, as there always are in, in his films. And uh, it was cool. I'm, I'm really glad he got to, uh, got to finish it. Did you watch it in two sittings like me or one big one? No, uh, four. Oh, really? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> wow so four one hour blocks like a sh- like a show yeah yeah essentially yeah. that's that's what i do if something's really long or if it's difficult to get through. like i'm i'm watching my dinner with andre right now and i've done two 15 minute sections <laughs> so i so, sort of go through in pieces what what movies can you recommend recently i always i always point to anything nolan or like recently parasite or um, yeah, Parasite was beautiful. Uh, really movies cool like movie. that. Is there, what, what can you recommend lately that you've watched? Besides oh, Warrior Nun, obviously, on Netflix streaming now. Warrior Nun <laughs> is possibly the greatest piece of entertainment that's ever been made. Um, You're not biased. Either. Well, no, no, no. Uh, that's just objective. That's just an objective. <laughs> it's, it's an objective truth, mate. Um, <laughs> uh, it's truth. Um, I, uh, it's not a movie, but I loved The Great. Did you see the great? The it's great. What's series. that? It's a television series with Nick Nicholas Holt and uh, the great. Uh, is it Dakota Fanning or Elle Fanning? I always get them mixed up. Yeah, Elle Fanning. Yeah, Elle Fanning. Yeah. It's amazing. They're bo- and they're comedy all drama. Amazing. Yeah, haven't seen it. Yeah, it's essentially it's <clears throat> created by the guy who wrote The Favorite, um, the movie Ooh, with uh, the movie. Olivia Coleman, and uh, so it's that sort of style. That that was that was amazing. Um, I'm watching the show Invincible right now, and that's pretty damn cool. The animated series, the animated comic, yeah, that just came out. Robert Kirkman's show. Um, what movies have I? Oh my god, I just watched uh, Promising Young Woman. You ever seen that? Oh, she knocks it out of the park, doesn't she? Holy, Carrie well, Mulligan. 
I'm not, Kerry Mulligan is astounding. There's a moment, I, won't, I would never spoil this, but there's a moment at the end where I was like, that's the I was gutsiest. Shocked. The, that's the gutsiest bit of screenwriting I've seen in decades. I mean, it was, it was so good. And I, I don't want to say any more than that because I know what you mean. I know it. what you're talking about. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't never have the, had the guts to do that. So, that, um, yeah. Yeah. So it was super, it was super well done. Um, what else am I watching? I don't know. I don't know. What about, what about you? Did you ever see Tenet? No, I haven't seen Tenet yet. Are you, are you not a not Nolan yet. fan or not really? Not you really. can be honest. I shouldn't be, but, uh, but I'm, <laughs> No, I find I find the movies a little slow and a little incomprehensible. Yeah, but, really. Yeah. I mean, look, he's a master. He's a he's a he's a towering filmmaking talent. Mm. Um, but it just doesn't it's it doesn't really grab me in the same way. That it's, it's so, who up. are your your favorite working directors at the moment? Someone like um, mm. like who who did um, Trial of the Chicago Seven? What's his name? Oh, well, that was that was uh, Aaron Sorkin. Aaron Sorkin is he someone that that you? Thinks to want to yeah, bang up well, Trump. obviously, as a screenwriter, he's a god. Uh, <laughs> as a filmmaker, he's he's becoming very, very good. Yeah, um, yeah, I love his. Yeah, I love him to death. Yeah, um, Ari Aster, who did Midsommar uh, and uh, Hereditary. I, I tell you what, mid see I Hereditary, I love, but Midsummer was too much for me. You know? Oh, I, really? I, yeah, oh, I see, just... Hereditary was too much for me. I, I was like, oh, oh really? God. It was yeah. so. It was so amazingly well executed, but I was like, I never want to go through that again. <laughs> Midsomar, I felt like was a walk in the park in comparison. And I really, really? I actually found it. Yeah, I found it hugely funny. Like What? We watched the same so, movie? <laughs> it's hilarious. It's, it's, what are you well, talking about, Dave? It, the nature of their... Well, okay, so first of all, and these will be minor plot spoilers, but nothing, nothing serious. But first of all, He's trying to break up with her, right? He's like, this relationship is going nowhere. He's, he's over it and so on and so forth. And then her parents die and it just cuts to him and her on the couch. And she's just like shrieking with song. <gasps> and he and can't so, do it. Yeah. It's brutal. It's brutal. But having been a boyfriend in that situation, I'm just watching this guy and it's like, oh man. You, you got to stick it out now. <laughs> and so, you know, I just found stuff like that hilarious like that it was is this horrific horror film but at the same time it's really just about being in this terrible relationship that's just that's not even ugly it's just boring and not great and i found it one of the most disturbing films i've ever seen yeah ever well, seen it's pretty, it's pretty damn disturbing but but in comparison to hereditary holy Maybe I need to watch Hereditary again. (laughs) Oh my god, that messed messed me up. That was more psychological. Whether as Midsummer was, there was a lot of imagery that was disturbing. You know what I mean? I guess so. I had the exact exact opposite experience. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah, I thought I thought thought Midsummer was a was a frothy comedy in comparison. But even but saying that, I yeah, I agree. He's he's going to be a star if he isn't already. Oh, can't wait to see. He's got a movie coming out. Of, I can't remember what it is, but that he's working on. But yeah, anything with his name, I'll watch for sure. Yeah, yeah, that's just transcendent filmmaking. And um, oh, same with uh, Yorgos Lanthimos. You know who did uh, uh, the Favorite and mm. um, the Lobster and uh, the Lobster's Killing of a weird. Sacred Deer. Oh, they're weird films. It? <laughs> Killing of a sacred deer. Oh my god, that's so disturbing. Oh, um, but it, and the tone of it is just so unique. Anyway, so the, those filmmakers, I'm really blown away by. But I also love, um, like, I love James Gunn. I love what he does with the, the Guardian movies. I love. Yeah, he's know, fun. I, like, I love, I love really fun filmmakers as well. And, and yeah. um, so uh, I've got a lot of a lot of a lot of directors I admire that are working right now. I'll give you a couple more because I know you're a very busy man, and I really appreciate your time, mate. No, um, no Nick Nick M says, "Question for Dave: What was it like working on Guyver and working oh. with the Japanese production team?" It was amazing. So yeah. Guyver, 
So this is a movie I did called Guyver 2 Dark Hero, and I was the star. And I was 23 years old, and I got cast in this. And I always wanted to be Batman or Indiana Jones or something. So I got to play this superhero character, and it was a dream. And so we went out. We shot most of it. Uh, the cave scenes were all shot in a soundstage in Van Nuys, but the rest of it we shot out in the Angeles Crest Mountains in the in the woods, wow. in the actual woods. And so it was like it was like summer camp, but you know you're getting paid, and it was all these beautiful actors and sets and stunts and explosions and and stuff. <laughs> and and the Japanese fight crew were astounding. Like the oh. fight scenes. The fight scenes in that movie are so good that I was sitting in my office at X-Men um, and the stunt coordinator walked past with Guyver 2 on VHS in his hand. And I was like, Gary, stop. Where are you going? He goes, oh, I'm going to show this to, to Brian, the director. And I was like, why? And he goes, have you ever seen the fight scenes in this movie? And I was like, I was like, Gary, turn it over. So he turns it over and he goes, that's you. And I was like, yeah. And he goes, why is that you? And I'm like, I'm the star of the movie. <laughs> so so um yeah so uh it was an amazing an amazing adventure oh. i just got to i got to be a superhero i met met my wife on that show and oh really yeah she she's she plays mary she's the archaeology student the little shorts and the red top and she discovers the uh the spaceship oh wow that's cool mm. i didn't know that you got you got kids don't you mate i do Ooh, a Guyver baby. Um, but, yeah, my daughter <laughs> Natasha has just turned seventeen. Hey, she was she. Is it true that she was um, the name yes. came from Black Widow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was attached to direct the Black Widow movie, write and direct the Black Widow movie in two thousand and four when she was born, and um, so she was born. And the next day, I had a meeting at Marvel, and I I showed her picture to Kevin Feige and to Avi Arad. And Avi said, oh, David, she's so beautiful. What is her name? And I was like, she doesn't have one yet. And uh, he's like, what about Natasha? It's a beautiful name. So I was like, if it gets the movie made, sure. So um, so we, no, but I like the name too. So we, so we named her after the Black Widow. So that was before to, even Iron Man came out. That was before the big Marvel sweep swept the yeah. Uh, world. Yeah, it was like when they were doing when they were doing the first Punisher movies and mm. with other studios. And so this was so black widow was originally set up with uh, Lakeshore entertainment or I'm sorry, um, Lionsgate entertainment. So we oh, were, okay. uh, we were developing okay. it over there. And then, and in fact, Iron Man, I worked, I was a writer on the first Iron Man for a year as well. Oh, wow. uh, yeah, I didn't, I ended up getting sort of boned out of credit, but, um, but we did that at new line cinema and then a year into it, they said, we're going to do this as our own studio. And so that's what happened. Can, can I, how does that work? Just quickly ask you, how does that work? How do you get boned out of a credit like that? How does that? Well, it was that very weird. I, or what, what is it? I know. I, I don't know. It, it was, I've never heard of it happening like this before. Um, but what happened was, so I wrote it when we were at New Line, but I wrote it with Marvel. And then they went... And Marvel went and made the movie, you know, which is essentially the movie we had developed. And then the Writers Guild told me I couldn't arbitrate for credit because there was a break in the chain of title, that they had gone from New Line to uh, Marvel Studios, and I had never worked for Marvel Studios because it hadn't existed. And I was like, yeah, but I worked with Marvel. They were the producers on the thing. It's all the same people making the movie. <laughs> And uh, the but the Writers Guild said I, I couldn't arbitrate for credit, so uh, it was weird. it was a bummer. That's it was a weird. bummer. I, yeah. A couple of quick ones here, Ryan. What's your weirdest fan interaction that you've ever had? Oh God, you know it <laughs> it, 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 it goes on and on. Well, I mean, I I talked about making a Doritos Tacos Loco uh, as yeah. Snake with a guy. I signed a guy's prosthetic leg. Uh, I've signed people's boobs. Um, no way, I, really? Oh yeah, I've signed a number of boobs. Uh, Men and, and female. Like, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, pretty much. And I'm like, I'm like, do not get this tattooed on 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 your boob. Um, and uh, oh god, you know, there's all sorts of things. There's, I mean, there's things, people come up to me and say things that make no sense to me. They talk about like anime characters I did 
that I have oh, no recollection really? of. And, and you're and, like, and, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. I'm like, sure, yeah, that's, <laughs> yes, I'm sure your theory is correct. Yeah, yeah, there's some passionate fans. David, my name's yeah. Carl, huge fan. Can I get a liquid? Carl, you can absolutely get a liquid. <laughs> uh, Dylan, so I'll give you a couple more. I've said that 10 minutes ago. David, how do you become a good screenwriter? Well, you read a lot, read <laughs> read a lot of scripts, um, read the screenwriting books, yep. uh, and then you write a lot. You, I mean, that's the key to being a good writer is you read a lot and you write a lot. Um, so start writing. It's hard when you're not getting paid for it to find it, to carve out the time, but you need to, if you really want to be a good screenwriter, try to find an hour a day, write one or two pages a day, and you know, you'll have you know, a first draft in, in a few months. Um, and then, so my recommendation is write a screenplay, put it away, write a second screenplay, put it away, write a third screenplay and you're starting to get pretty good. Now go back, re-edit your third screenplay again and again and again until it's good. Now take in everything you've learned and go back and rewrite one and two. And I then like you'll that. have, then you'll have three, hopefully well-written screenplays. Um, you'll have put in the work you need to put in and, um, you know, beyond that, it's just about loving movies and loving, you know, the ability to watch a movie and break down the screenplay structure. You know, how is the character progressing? What are the obstacles in their way? How, how are, where are their character turns? Where does the story turn? Um, you know, all that stuff. And it's really fun. It's, it's screenwriting is like architecture. You know, you, you, it's like building a house um, more so than, than novel writing, I, I think. Um, mm. So, uh, so there's a definite technique to it. There is no shortage of books or people to give you advice. Um, mm. So just, just, just got to do it, do it, and do it, and do it, and do it. That's great advice. Great advice, mate. So upcoming projects, as you said, Warrior Nun season two. Would that come out next year? I'm guessing. Yes. Yeah. 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 Probably the beginning of next year, which you know, it's it's a while since season one, but uh, but it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Seasons. Second season is very cool. Better than the first? Um, uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I, I love the first season, but, you know, we learned a lot of lessons and we're building on a lot of relationships that, that uh, got set up. So I think so. I think it'll up the ante and, and um, it's going to be very, very cool for, for the Warrior Nun fans out there. Um, I'm producing an animated show that I'm going to be in that I can't talk about. Yep. Uh, what can I talk about? You, were, um, you there was a mini series you were attached to World War Three. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, that was that's still on my IMDb. We developed that, like I don't know, eight years ago, and I I got a deal at Fox and I wrote it, and I wrote the pilot and the all the time I was working on the pilot, the or during the time I was working on the pilot, the they shut down the Fox event miniseries department. So by the time I delivered the script, they were like, oh, we're not really doing that anymore. But nobody told me, you know, I, I was just writing, you know. So I wrote it and I, I got paid for it, but- um, That is just, this is bizarre, just, some of these stories that you say. Oh yeah, no, 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 it's insane, like, the stuff I deal with. And so it just died. Um, but I think it's such a compelling title that people people pick it out all the time. And they're like, what about World War Three? And I'm like, it's so it is cool. there. It's there. If 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 it was like, it exists. It's, but, exists. But but since then, you know, Fox Television has been bought by uh, Disney. Disney. So yeah. it's not. And it's not even the same owners anymore. So yes, Disney theoretically owns my World War Three script, and if they want to bring it back, you know, I'm I'm down. But uh, it just got caught in in the in the mess of corporate reorganization. So. Well, mate, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I did it indeed. I enjoyed myself immensely. There were great questions, and and uh, your uh, your fans are obviously intelligent, highly attractive people. So um, just like the know, host, please, yeah, <laughs> just like the host. So uh, my love to you and to all of them. And you know, if I find myself in Australia at the end of the year and you see me sneaking about, please. All my name. Well, I, th I think you'll drink me under the table after Keitha 
after I've the had some practice story. now. You've had some practice, yeah. 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 We'll is there see. anything? We'll is see. there anything else you want to say, mate, to to the fans, just quickly, or? Yeah, I just uh, look. I want to say that I continue to appreciate your love and support and enthusiasm. I I I really am so fortunate in that I I I almost never have any negative fan interactions. Almost never, and that's unheard of in this snipey snide world. So, uh, thank you all for being so supportive and so awesome and. I look forward to meeting you all. And, of course, follow Dave on Twitter, Instagram, and get a cameo from him. Dave, it's been an absolute pleasure. Before I let you go, I've got a, I've got a good friend of mine. His name's Vikarth. And Metal Gear Solid 1's his favorite game of all time. Is there anything Snake can say to Vike? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Vikarth? Vikarth, yeah. He doesn't know I'm doing this, but, um, yeah, his name's Vikarth. Yeah. I could say, Vikarth, this is Snake. We're having a problem with Metal Gear, and I need your help. So contact me by codec, damn it. Damn. He's going to love that. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Mate, it's been an honor. Uh, I'm going to have you back. We're going to do it again. 100%, mate. Have a great day, mate. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks. You too. See you. There you have it, guys. I hope you enjoyed that one. That was uh, unreal. Another great chat. I mean, we just keep getting amazing guests, don't we? Unbelievable. David Hayter, everybody. Uh, sorry I didn't get all the super chats, guys. Um, we went overtime with Dave there. He was very gracious to give us an hour and a half, nearly. Um Craig, I, look, stanky pasta. I really appreciate that. My name's actually Kyle, not... <laughs> oh, no. That's my accent. Sorry, man. Sorry, brother. Craig, I really appreciate the donation, man. Thank you. Mash... Potation? Thank you for that. And GM, sorry I couldn't get your question in as well, mate. Really appreciate the support, though. I really appreciate the support, guys. How'd you enjoy it? You have fun? Awesome. MGS, dude. Great guess, Joel. You're pretty good. <laughs> Crank, another great interview. Thank you, Crank. I appreciate it, man. I hope you subscribed. I hope you guys are subscribed. Come on. What a great dude, Dylan. I know. What a great dude, man. Such a great guy. And now I'm going to go back and watch Watchmen, X-Men, you name it. I'm going through them. And Warrior Nun. Really great, if statement. Thank you. Who cares? Thanks, man. The end. No, Chris, I know. Another great stream, Dan. Legend. I really appreciate it. Thank you. You should be verified. Well, I think you get verified at 100,000 subs. So I'm getting there. I'm close. I don't know. I'm nearly at 95K. So we're nearly there, guys. So if you have... If every one of you shared it with a friend... We'd be getting closer and said, come on, subscribe to Dan. Come on. No, I appreciate it, guys. Mash, yeah. Thank you, brother. What's my favorite MGS? Number one, for sure, yeah. Laurie Allen, the voice of Boss and Pearl from SpongeBob. Hey, I'd love to get Tom Kenny on, who is SpongeBob. That'd be cool. It was a lot of fun. Great insights. Really good insights. Really good insights with Dave then. And he's a nice guy, exactly. He's just easy to talk to. We're going to get him back on. Chris, I have tried to get Laura Bailey on. She actually declined me. Not her. She probably never saw it. It was her management that declined it. But, hey, I'll keep trying. The, the key is to harass them. Kindly harass, I say. So, when I say harass, I mean every six months i'll send an email out you know what i mean um and say are you free now are you free now you know keep in their keep in their uh, mind snake i've been subscribed for a long time and also gave a thumbs up and a thank you for reading my comment it means the world to me snake great questions and thank you man 
You should watch the armed an iteration video. It features Dave. Okay. Can you link me that, Craig? On Twitter or something? Great interview, man. Just subscribe. Sean, brother. Great to have you in here. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Guys, you can um, head over to my Twitter and follow me over there, Dan Allen Gaming. Same with Instagram. Same with uh, Twitter, TikTok, wherever you are. I really appreciate it if you head over there and give me a follow. It means a lot. But a um, little less, I'm already subscribed. It's because you're a legend, hey? David is the best. Do one with Nolan North. I'd love to. I'd love to. Northerner, again, thank you, man. Thank you, really appreciate it, and thanks for stopping by, as always. Chris, Ashley from The Last of Us. So they're, they're the two couple I got denied from. Ashley Johnson as well. Couldn't get a hold of her. Same with Christopher Judd, Sean. These, these are the top of the top. We were lucky to get Troy Baker on this show, guys. I'll tell you right now. That was a... a I don't want to say a fluke, but... Oh, God, I love this song. It wasn't a fluke, it was just great timing. So it's all about the timing, I think. And Christopher Judd is working on God of War, obviously the new God of War, so he doesn't have time for this at the moment. Once that game comes out, then he'll have more spare time. And that's when we get him. Same for Ashley Johnson and, and Laura Bailey. I don't know. They don't just you look them up on YouTube, they don't just do any old interview. So we need to work on those. The key is to harass them, Dan2021. No, don't quote me on that, V. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> the key is to harass them. Shit, I actually said that. Okay, let, let me backtrack. By harass, I mean kindly email them more than once. That's what I, I want to clarify. Far out. So funny. Maybe Elias T. He's Adam Jensen from Deus Ex. Yeah, JP. You know who I want to get on really badly? Steve Downs, the voice of Master Chief. I'm I'm pushing for it. I'm pushing for it. But guys, we do have Julie Nathanson on this week. Couple of days time. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Uh, yeah. Maybe it's tomorrow. Let me look into that. But it's... <clears throat> it's... Uh, I'll do a post about that later. Julie Nathanson. Uh, Samantha Maxis. She's in Batman The Long Halloween, the new animated film. Uh, she's in a bunch of stuff, guys. She's going to be great fun to talk to. What else is she in? Let me just quickly look this up. Obviously, Samantha Maxis, Cold, Black Ops Cold War. Um, she's in World of Warcraft. She's in... Miles Morales, Last of Us, as additional voices, bunch of stuff. We'll talk to her, guys. That'll be great. That'll be great. Parzival, thank you for the five. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Finally, I didn't miss this interview. Thanks, man. How on earth can interviews these guys on your stream? Oh, how do I get them on? Yeah, I get that question. That's a that's a question I get a lot. How do you get these guys on? It's it's pretty simple. I reach out on to their managers via email or their their personal email, and I just say, look, I just be honest. Look, we've got a great community over here. We'd love to have you on to talk all things games, movies, um, whatever role they're in. I'd love to chat and. Uh, and I give them some of the numbers, what we've done, and, and they're more than happy. You know, they, they don't get too many requests. So, and we've got pretty good numbers on the channel, so they're more than happy to come on. But thank you, Parzival. Thank you so much for that five. Appreciate it. Really appreciate it. Try reaching out over Critical Role. Yeah, Chris. Good idea. I will. That's a great idea, Chris. I will, I'll take you up. I will do that. Hey, Dan, do you think it's possible to get the trailer for God of War today? Today is the three anniversary. You know what? I always hear this, the anniversary of certain things. Um, they don't actually care about anniversaries, to be blunt. 
dead set. They uh, they don't actually care. In a, in a way, what I mean by that is that's that doesn't go into their mind when announcing things. Do you know what I mean? Laugh my ass off. I made him laugh. Thank you for calling me V. You're a legend. <laughs> you did make me laugh. Well done. I think your caliber of interview is on point, man. The big names will pour in eventually. Sam Witwer would be another great one. I know. Sam Witwer, days gone. Darth Maul. What a, I've tried. I've actually tried to get him on. I haven't got a response, so I'll keep trying. Mate, if you knew the amount of emails that I'm going back and forth with someone right now, months and months of work to try and get him on. It's not easy. You got to stay persistent. Um, like Craig Fabras, Fabras, uh, who plays Ghost and and Gaz in Modern Warfare, and that man, we that took months to get him on. Interview with Neil Druckmann one day, cousin. I'd love to. I'd love to. Oh, we didn't talk about Metal Gear Survive with Dave then. We didn't talk about Metal Gear Survive. I wanted to see... He wouldn't have played it. He didn't even play Phantom Pain. There's no way he would have played Survive. Survive was terrible, guys. If, if I have to be honest. Commander Shepard actors, Northern. I have. I have. No response yet. No response yet. But hopefully, once that game comes out, a bit of publicity, get them on. I think it'll be great. Yuri, oh yeah, natural. Oh yeah, I'm working on it. I've got a copy of Metal Gear, which is signed by Hideo Kojima and the lead art director. Wow, that's got to be worth a bit, Darth. Jeff, uh, if you could bring Charles Dance. He's a big star, man. Come on, Jeff. Come on, Jeff. we got to be... I always get this question. Um... Keanu Reeves, get him on, man. And you know what's funny? I actually put I put it out there. I actually put it out there, and the manager got back to me, and said, "Yeah, nah, no thanks. <laughs> no, nah, it wasn't like that." But she got back, and she literally said, "Ah, uh, he's unavailable. That's it. He's unavailable." Fair enough. It's Keanu Reeves. He's unavailable. Would you try interviewing John Garve? Oh, yeah, he'd be cool. He'd be cool. Where's David? You don't like me. Am I not good enough for you? Do I genuinely think there's going to be a new Metal Gear? Yeah, look, I've got a... If you guys want to hear me talk about this sort of stuff, I've got a podcast um, with a guy called Vike, which just mentioned him earlier. Me and him. A new episode's actually going up today. Um, we talk all things PlayStation. It's called the PS5 Central Podcast. Look it up. Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your podcasts. We go for about an hour, an hour and a half. We talk about all the latest gaming news for PlayStation. And um, and we actually go into Metal Gear Remake in this week's episode. So um, that'll be out in the next few hours. That's one of the next things I'll do today. So you can uh, check that out, guys. PS5 Central Podcast. Oh, this is great music. I know, Mark Mir would be good. He'd be really good. Any YouTubers I'd like to get on this natural? Yeah, have you heard of Z Laner? Z Laner, he plays with Dr. Disrespect. I'd like to get him on. There's a guy called Skill Up. An Australian reviewer. I think we'd have a good chat. Um, ACG, another reviewer. Uh, Jack Septikai, he'd be good. You know, people like that. There's, there's plenty of people. For oh, yeah, YouTubers. I mean, that's just something I just haven't thought of. Yeah, we could branch out in that way, for sure. But at the moment, I'm just sticking to these gaming icons and directors and actors and. Um, 
yeah we've got we've got a couple of exciting guests coming on the show guys so just stay tuned we've got some exciting stuff in the works um oh dave sent me an email he was waiting oh, i must have left him for a bit there that's interesting nah he's all good all good uh who da, 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 da. drop the link gonna give it a listen this is what i'm listening to right now what you're hearing this is the snake eater complete soundtrack ps2 wow that's crazy I think he wanted a different voice actor because spoilers, Venom Snake isn't real Snake, and exactly tailored. Yeah, hunt. That's exactly what I thought. Because that's the twist in the end, isn't it? Well, not the twist. You know what I mean? That's the. It's not actually him. So you're a hundred percent right, Taylor. That's what. And also, he wanted to work with Keith Sutherland, <laughs> but that's that's also a part of it. Yeah. Dave's Dave is the world's best voice of games. Damn, he's pretty damn good. He's pretty damn good. Gregor, how you doing? I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great. How are you? Harry Gregson Williams said this. He did not kiss Ma. Really? Are you serious? Harry Greg, he's a he's awesome. Did he really? Hold on, I'm looking this up. Harry Gregson Williams. A famous uh, composer, a famous composer, Harry Gregson Williams, who did Metal Gear. Serious? He did too. Metal Gear Solid 2. Wow. I didn't know that. I did not know that. Kisma, thank you for that information. Because Harry Gregson Williams, he did. Did he do more other Metal Gears? He did. He did. He did Ground Zeroes. He did. He did Advanced Warfare. He's done some big movies too. The newest Metal Gear is just Hitman, ain't it? In terms of gameplay, it is a little bit like Hitman. Yeah. Glad I was able to catch it. Well, this will be up as a VOD after Tanner. So if you want to check out the whole thing, I'm going to have timestamps. Do that later today. And, and, and yeah. Dan, I was talking about the podcast. Cal Play. What do you mean? Oh, drop a link to the podcast. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah, I'll drop a link to my podcast here now. If you guys want to see more of my stuff. Um, Chris, thank you, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for your awesome interviews. Keep up. Keep your persistence up. Get something good to eat from the money and imagine me inviting. <laughs> thank you, man. I appreciate it, Chris. It means a lot, man. Thank you. Great to have you here, man. I literally missed the whole thing. Dude, don't worry. You can go back and watch it all in its glory. That'd be cruel if I made it a, if I made this live stream just um just for live people only. I mean that'd just be cruel. I can't do that. Wow, this music it really is classic, isn't it guys? Even for MGS3, David had to re-audition for that role. I didn't ask him about that, really. He had to re-audition? Really? Yeah. Hayden and Keith should be the voice actors for the remake. Yeah, Michael Ironside. I said this before. Sam Fisher himself. Wouldn't that be cool? Uh, 
Hey Dan, no news about the VA Cyberpunk like in the future. Yeah, we've got Rogue coming on. We've got Rogue coming on, who also is Diana Burnwood and is also Celine in Returnal, a main character of Returnal. So we're setting that interview up. Returnal comes out on the 30th of this month, 30th, so in 10 days. We're setting it up so a couple of days after the game comes out, she'll come on because there'll be questions about that game, Returnal, a PS exclusive. She's the main lead. But of course, we're going to talk cyberpunk with the Hitman, all sorts of things. So look out for that. Uh, in terms of Robbie Damon, it doesn't look like he's going to come on. He was River. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've covered a lot of those cyberpunk guys. So I'd love to have him back on. Yeah, I loved talking to Gavin, Carla. You know, they're just, they were some really great people. He produced Death Stranding music. Did he really? Harry Gregson. Yeah, wow. Yeah, guys, if you don't want to miss one of these live streams, you've got to, you've got to be subscribed for one, but you've also got to, I think you got to click the bell icon from memory. you got to click the bell icon. Dan, do you, hold on, Mr. G, YouTube notifications kept me waiting. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. Um, you've got to... You gotta click the bell. Do I play Rogue Company? Um, yeah, I actually platinum the game on PlayStation. I didn't mind it. I didn't mind it to be honest. I thought it was all right. Jetstream, hi from Morocco. Morocco. That's somewhere I haven't been. The reason why MGS3 is set in the jungle is because. To get Harry back, he wanted to make music around that set. Really? Game guys? You got some inf interesting information here. I don't know if you're talking out of your ass or you know a lot about it. And I'm, I'm guessing it's the latter. Sounds like you know your shit, brother. But it... it really? Does Hideo like him that much that he would do that? What's the term far out used for? So, yeah, I say far out a lot. Um... Far out is like, far out, wow. Are you serious? You know, like, if I say far out, I'll, it means, wow, really? Seriously? It's sort of questioning it, like, wow, far out, okay. I think a good way to look at it is Big Boss didn't sound like Snake in 4, so his voice changed as he got older. She was great in Ghost Recon Wild. Was she in Recon Wildlands? Was she really? Jane Perry. Was she really? She's been in a lot of stuff. She's got a great voice. Hitman 2, Credibles, Wildlands, you're right. Karen Bowman. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, no, that's confirmed, guys. We've we've got her on. So, that's happening. So, look forward to that. Oh, she's been in a lot of stuff. Yeah. Some Need for Speeds. A lot of the Need for Speeds, that, that voice you hear. That's her. Lorita, yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm interviewing her. That's confirmed. Yeah. Devastator. Why am I watching this when I should be in class? I know why. Because you're a legend. You're a legend and I keep... Can't control this uh, voice breaks, eh? Your interview slots line up nicely with my time zone. Haha, <laughs> Northern, are you one of the lucky ones? What what time zone are you in, man? What time is it now? So for me, it's, it's heading on 9am. So started at 7am, got up at 6, went to bed at 2. So I've had four hours. I'm doing all right. I look fresher than what I should be for a four hour sleep. And also guys, I'll be um I'll be streaming the Resident Evil demo this week. 
Saturday, Sunday, whenever it's out, there's a new demo that's going to come out. Um, I streamed the last one the other day, had a couple of issues. They're gone now, so we're right to go for right to go for the next one. If you want to see me get a few scares and take on Lady Demetriscu. I put a video out on her on the channel yesterday or the day before. I think we hit 10k views, which is good for me. 10k views is good for me. It's, get, it's picking up some traction, the video. Yeah, 11k now, which is good for a small channel like me. So go and check that out if you want to see her. But she's, I want to get her voice actor on. I've said it, I say it every time. I, you know, I feel like if you put it out there, then you'll re it'll return. You know what I mean? You manifest. You manifest it. And I might even stream the Warzone event. I might. I'm thinking about it. You know, the, the Warzone event where there's going to be a new map, a whole thing. i got to get up early for 5 a.m. They don't look after us Australians, guys. They really don't when it comes to these things. They don't care. The only good thing, I'll tell you one thing. The good thing about coming in, being in Australia is you get games. You're the second in the world to get games when they come out. So New Zealand... This is a trick for you guys. If you want to be the first to play a game, if you if you have a New Zealand account and buy it online, you will get the game. You'll be the first to play it because of the time zone, right? New Zealand are one hour ahead of Australia. So Australia is second fastest to play games. Do you see what I'm saying? If you don't have that, you'll have to wait another 11 hours for that game to be activated in your country. There's a little tip for you guys that you won't hear. But... Um, that's one good thing. Get to play these games early. Hey, Dan, can you get Dice K 2G from Ghost of Tsushima? Hey, guess what, Cal? You're in luck. After I'm done here, you can go and check out my interview with him. I've already done it. Have I made your day? I hope I have. Yeah, we already did it. Had an hour with him. Great guy. Great guy. And then you can check out the one with Troy Baker, the one with David. There's plenty there. Plenty there. Just, I think if you just type in Dan Allen interviews, Dan Allen interviews, type that into YouTube, and there's a playlist right there. Look at this. Bang. Joseph Farris, Jace, Pierre Michael, Dan Victor Allen, Rob Weedoff, Roger Clark. The list goes on. Magnus Braun. It's there for you, brother. Brother, sister, mother. Gabriel Slayer would be a great guess. Slower? Who's that? C ignore my ignorance. Who's that? Red Dead Redemption. Who does he play? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. You think he'd be good? Yeah, I think we could get him on. It's 7 p.m. 8 a.m. Pilgrim, 8 a.m. You must be... Where are you, Pilgrim? 7 p.m. Eastern. That's that's That lines up nicely. Coming up to 12 a.m. That's not bad. 1 a.m. in Germany, Kisma. Well, thank you for staying up with us. 7 p.m. in the fill, yeah. 7 p.m. There you go. UK is at 12 a.m. Yeah. Can you do a season three battle pass review? Yeah, yeah. Once season three comes out for Warzone, I'm gonna buy. It. I'll just buy it. And full disclosure, they send me cod points. So if you're thinking, Dan, how do you, do you just have money coming out of your ass? Nah. COD, COD send me battle points so I can unlock it. There's That's the secret. Um, so I unlock it straight away and I'll, I'll take a look what's there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple of videos. I'm going to do showcase of all the operators. Um, the intros. All the skins. Stuff like that. You know. I think that'll be cool. Four PM in Vancouver. Oh, you're in Vancouver. That's perfect, eh? I've been to. Oh no, have I been to Vancouver? No, I haven't been to Vancouver. I've been to Toronto in Canada. Yeah, it's a lot like Melbourne here in Melbourne, where I'm from. 
you know, you you think they're the same place. Very similar. Hey Dan, have you ever got Ruben Langdon, Dante from DMC? Calvin. Uh he'd be great. Don't you worry, I'll try. I'm a bit wrong with what I said. In an interview, Harry jokingly said he might return to compose the game if it's set in the Amazon. At the time, Hideo was planning to set it in the jungle. Decided to use this as a way to get... Ah, okay. So it just lined up like that. That's cool. Glad to see another Brit. You're not talking about me, are you? <laughs> South Asia, 4.30 a.m.? Shit, you need to get some rest. Fun fact, I live in the same street as Leslie Benzies, who worked as the executive producer on GTA 5. Well, there you go. Yeah, I'm in Melbourne. I'm not in Sydney. I was born in Sydney, but I'm in Melbourne. Yeah, Melbourne, Australia. Yeah. Just notice your background is mirrored. How did you know? What gave it away? The fact that Uncharted is... Um, Uncharted is... Skewed. Yeah, I am mirrored. That is weird. Oh, it's it's a zoom setting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, this might trip you out. Ready? I'll switch it. Ready? Oh, hold on. There you go. That's what it looks like unmirrored. Ah, uh, Nickel, Melbourne, Sydney. Sorry, but true. <laughs> what do I prefer? <clears throat> God of War or Red Dead? Jeez, you're giving me some tough questions, Julius. Jeez. Um, I'm going to have to say God of War 2018. Uh, no, I really am. I'm going to have to say God of War 2018 was better. In my opinion, I don't. I just thought it was a masterpiece, Julius. I thought it was a masterpiece of a game, God of War 20. I just thought it was that good. You know, I'd have it in my top five of all time. Red Dead 1 and 2 would be in my top 10 of all time, yeah? This is in top five territory. So, and although, in saying that, Red Dead 2, I believe is the greatest game technically ever made to this day and up there would be last of us part two technically what they were able to achieve in the game was unreal incredible uh in terms of the details the amount of random in encounters and just i just think it's unreal the detail in the game is on another level whether you like the gameplay or the story that's another whole other kettle of fish I'm just saying from a technical standpoint. It's better than New... Are you from Newcastle, Lorita? Yeah. No, Newcastle's a great place. Newcastle's a great place. He told him that what he said had been the inspiration for the game setting. He didn't tell Gregson the truth. Ha! <laughs> How did you find this information out? How did you find that out, man? Which coast in Melbourne? Oh, I can't I can't give you too many details or I'll have someone knocking on my door. I live away from the city. Yeah. About 40 40 minutes away from the city. Will there be a chance to interview Freya? Now, who did Freya, Loretta? Who did Freya? 
because I believe that that is going to happen. I'm just wondering who it is. Just quickly, let me look this up. Was she in God of War? Uh, was she in... Was she in Cyberpunk? Let's look this up. Danielle Bus... I don't even want to say it. Bice... I can't... Bicetti? No, that's not right. I'm, I'm butchering it. She was in God of War. She was in Madden NFL 21, the game. She was in Insidious. Okay. No, I'm thinking of the wrong person. She looks to be a pretty well-known Hollywood actor. I'll give it a go. But she's probably not a gamer, you know what I mean? It's so good when they're gamers. It really helps when the guests are gamer. You know what I mean? It's just... <clears throat> Have I played Doom 1993? Um... Have I played Doom 1993? Of course, I've played all the Dooms. What a series. Have you seen my chair, guys? Have you seen it? Have you seen the poster here? Just off to the side, Doom thing here. Ready? You think I'm a Doom fan? Let's take a look. So, what have we got here? We've got a Doom shirt. <laughs> you tell me if you think I'm a Doom fan. Hold on. Just let me know if you think I'm a Doom fan. Tell me when you think. I'm a Doom fan. Just, just holler out, all right? Just holler, holler at me. <laughs> what do you, what do you think? You think I like Doom? Yeah. <laughs> oh shit. They need a Doom pop vinyl. That's something I don't have. <laughs> oh shit I watch a lot of streams I think probably most fun facts come from watching a Metal Gear streamer what, what Metal Gear streamer do you watch? what do you think about YouTuber Croyx89 I've never heard of him to be perfectly honest to be perfectly honest man never heard of him should I have? Roger Craig Smith, Tanner. No update at this stage. I'll keep you updated. But I want him on. I want him on. Have I been to New Zealand, Vincent? I have. It's one of my favorite countries in the world. It's a beautiful place. And I want to go back. 100%. Love it in New Zealand. How can you not love it? I want to go and look at all the Lord of the Rings stuff. So I went to the other side. Um, but I want to go um, to the opposite side where I didn't go and check out all the uh, the Lord of the Rings, you know, tour stuff. Because uh, you know, Lord of the Rings, one of my favorite movies of all time. But the girlfriend, not a Lord of the Rings fan, so I'll have to convince her to come. I mean, she'll come. It's beautiful scenery. You can't complain. <laughs> David actually let yeah. David left. He's in a cardboard box behind me. Yeah. <laughs> You've seen the Lord of the Rings, yeah. Yeah. Something tells me he might be a Doom fan. Yeah, exactly. Okay, Doomer. Okay, Boomer. All right, guys. It's been an absolute pleasure. Again, I really appreciate it. Leave a like on the video if you haven't already. Um, follow me Twitter Instagram that really helps if you can head over Instagram if you've got one or Twitter um, if you've got a question DM me more than happy to answer it um, and you can become a member of the channel I go on about I only go on about it because you know this is my job it's it's a full-time job so all the support does really I really do appreciate it, it does help so 
Um, and yeah, guys, so just keep tuning in. We've got great guests coming in. So I hope you've enjoyed yourself, guys. All right. Have a great day wherever you are. Have a great sleep. I'll see you next time, guys. Peace.